Welcome to the new Craftivity Club. I hope you picked up your kits and are ready to get creative with crafts. But first, let's enjoy a portion from Raoul Dahl's The Witches. I'll be reading from the chapter, The Mouse Burglar. My grandmother hustled me back into my own bedroom and out onto the balcony. Are you ready, she asked. I'm gonna put you in the sock now. I hope I can manage this, I said. I'm only a little mouse. You'll manage, she said. Good luck, my darling. She popped me into the sock and started lowering me over the balcony. I crouched inside the sock and held my breath. Whew. Through the stitches, I could see out quite clearly. Miles below me, the children playing on the beach were the size of beetles. The sock started swinging in the breeze. I looked up and saw my grandmother's head sticking out over the railings of the balcony above. You're nearly there, she called out. Here we go, gently does it, you're down. I felt a slight bump. In you go, my grandmother was shouting. Hurry, 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 search the room. I jumped out of the sock and ran into the grand high witch's bedroom. There was the same musty smell about the place that I had noticed in the ballroom. It was the stench of witches. It reminded me of the smell inside the men's public lavatory at our local railway station. As far as I could see, the room was tidy enough. There was no sign anywhere that it was inhabited by anyone but an ordinary person. But then there wouldn't be wood there. No witch would be stupid enough to leave anything suspicious lying around for the hotel maid to see. Suddenly, I saw a frog jumping across the carpet and disappearing under the bed. I jumped myself. Hurry up! came my grandmother's voice from somewhere high up outside. Grab the stuff and get out. I started skittering round and trying to search the room. This wasn't so easy. I couldn't, for example, open any of the drawers. I couldn't open the doors of the big wardrobe either. I stopped skittering about. I sat in the middle of the floor and had to think. If the Grand High Witch wanted to hide something top secret, where would she put it? Certainly not in any ordinary drawer not in the wardrobe either. It was too obvious. I jumped up onto the bed to get a better view of the room. Hey, I thought, what about under the mattress? Very carefully, I lowered myself over the edge of the bed and wormed my way underneath the mattress. I had to push forward hard to make any headway. But I kept at it. I couldn't see a thing. I was scrabbling about under the mattress when my head suddenly bumped against something hard inside the mattress above me. I reached up and felt it with my paw. Could it be a little bottle? It was a little bottle. I could trace the shape of it through the cloth of the mattress. And right alongside it, I felt another hard one, and another, and another. The Grand High Witch must have slid open the mattress, put all the bottles inside, and then sewed it up all again. I began tearing away frantically at the mattress cloth above my head with my teeth. My front teeth were extremely sharp and it didn't take me long to make a small hole. I climbed into the hole and grabbed a bottle by the neck. I pushed it down through the hole in the mattress and climbed out after it. Walking backwards and dragging the bottle behind me, I managed to reach the edge of the mattress. I rolled the bottle off the bed onto the carpet. It bounced, but it didn't break. I jumped down off the bed. I examined the little bottle. It was identical to the one the Grand High Witch had had in the ballroom. There was a label on this one. Formula 86, it said, Delayed Action Mouse Maker. Then it said, this bottle contains 500 doses. Eureka! I felt tremendously pleased with myself. Three frogs came hopping out from under the bed. They crouched on the carpet, staring at me with large black eyes. I stared back at them. Those huge eyes were the saddest things I had ever seen. It suddenly occurred to me that almost certainly once upon a time they had been children, those frogs, before the Grand High Witch had got a hold of them. I stood there clutching the bottle and staring at the frogs. Who are you? I asked them. At that exact moment, I heard a key turning in the lock of the door and the door burst open and the Grand High Witch swept into the room. Will he get caught by the Grand High Witch? Find out by checking out the witches at your Clearwater Library. Now let's get started with our Perler Beak Mouse.
place the pegboard over the mouse pattern. Make sure to line up each peg with a colored square. You may use clear tape to keep your pegboard in place. Then use your tweezers or your fingers to place the appropriate color on each peg. Next, place the bright pink pegs on his ears. Don't forget the black border around the ears. Now that the second ear is complete, continue with the lower gray part of the mouse and the black border around it. Finally, add the bright pink pegs to the inside of the tail and the black pegs for the outline. Don't forget to leave the last four pink squares empty, the ones with the blue dots. This will leave a hole that you can lace your yarn through. For the next step, you will need an iron, ironing board, and half of your ironing sheet that was included in your kit. This step should be done by an adult or with adult supervision. Place the half sheet of ironing paper over the beads and pegboard. Set your iron between medium and high heat. Press slightly down and move the iron back and forth. Remember the edges as you iron as well. Keep the iron moving back and forth for about 30 to 60 seconds. Pull the ironing sheet slightly up on the corners to make sure your beads have fused together. Next, flip the perler bead craft over, pull the pegboard off, and place the other half of the sheet on the other side, and repeat the ironing process, back and forth for the 30 and 60 seconds. Once ironing is complete, give it a few minutes to cool. To prevent warping, you can place a heavy book on it for a few minutes. Now that the perler bead mouse is cool and complete, take the lace that was included in your kit and thread it through the hole. Tie it or braid it. Hi, welcome back. And our last segment is the Witch's Formula 86 Delayed Action Mouse Maker Recipe. And you may have noticed a little bottle in your craft kit. You open it up, there's a recipe inside. The ingredients for the witch's recipe is one gruntle's egg, the claw of a grabber runcher, the beak of a blabber stitch, the snout of a grovel squirt, and a tongue of a cat springer. The ingredients that we're going to make today for this recipe is actually two cups of sugar, two quarts of water, lime drink mix, pineapple juice, ginger ale, and ice. And since I don't have a very huge bowl, I'm going to divide it in half, so we'll do a little math. The recipe on your paper makes four quarts. I'm going to divide it in half and make two quarts, or eight cups. The instructions say to stir together sugar and water until sugar is dissolved. So instead of two cups of sugar, I have one cup of sugar. This is one cup of sugar that I already pre-measured. And then, instead of two quarts of water, we're going to put in one quart of water, and that's about four cups. So we'll pour the water in. And it says stir, or uh, stir the water and the sugar until the sugar is dissolved. So we're gonna stir it up good. Now instead of the two envelopes of lime drink mix, we're gonna do one envelope. Now the envelopes are 0.13 ounces. We have 
these little packets that we bought. 0.01 ounces. So we need 13 of these packets to equal 0.13 ounces. So I put in 13 packets of this lime drink mix. And it says during the remaining ingredients, so we're gonna put in the lime drink mix. Instead of 46 ounces of pineapple juice, we're going to put in 23 ounces of pineapple juice, which is 2.875 cups. And I decided to round that to about three cups. So here's our pineapple juice, this is two, two cups. And the last cup. Our last few ingredients is ginger ale and ice. So instead of one quart of ginger ale, we're gonna do a half a quart of ginger ale. Now one quart is four cups. So four divided by two is two, two cups of ginger ale. Here, here's our ginger ale. And we're gonna put two cups in. I didn't pre-measure it because I like to keep the, the fizziness of the drink. So we're gonna do it right now. We've got one cup. And two cups. And our last ingredient is just ice. So we're gonna pour our ice in and mix it up good. So I have my little Formula 86 Delayed Action Mouse Maker bottle. I think I'll put it in the bottle and try some. Let's take a taste. Mm. I taste the pineapple for sure. Mm, it's good. Feeling kind of funny. What's happening? Oh my gosh!